providing excellent communication to our customers, and finding creative solutions to help people in her community achieve home ownership. Sierra brings her extensive product knowledge and expertise into every customer relationship. She takes a great deal of pride helping families in her community reach their home ownership goals and is thrilled to be partnered with a company that provides such distinctive and comprehensive service to its customers. Sierra is ready to assist you and exceed your expectations. Please welcome Sierra J. Versus 30 years. So you would save 50 payments 
Man. for you know nearly over four over four years. So if you're paying the payment is does that show on here? Payment's like twelve hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you're paying twelve hundred dollars and you save four years of twelve hundred dollar payments, that's a huge savings. So that's the chart on the right, and mm -hmm. then on the left it shows how much interest you'd save. Yeah. So over the life of the loan, you would save. Twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in interest. Wow! By just paying a hundred extra to principal. That's crazy. Pretty good. Yeah. So um, there again, there's more to the formula. So for example, um, you are paying a hundred dollars extra per month, so you do have to factor that in. Um, and so you're saving, tw but you're saving twenty-seven thousand in interest, but then you're also saving almost five years in payments as well. So you'd have to add 1200 a month at four years, so 48 um, plus this. So huge savings, right? That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So um, there are amortization schedules like this or little formula calculators online if you want to ever jump around and play with it. Um, you know, bankrate.com is a good one. Uh, or you can just call me because like I said, I like this stuff. It's for me. <laughs> Nerd alert. Uh, okay, next one is the next page. Um, first of all, any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. okay so uh, paying it off early, that's always good. Save money, right? But you said, if, um, if I caught it, the first thing you said was that if you don't have anything better to do with mm -hmm. money. Right. So, um, I mean, in your business, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't affect you at all. I mean, as far as right. um, if they paid off soon or not. No. So one way or the other. Okay. Right. Um, but would they be better off investing that money into something else rather than paying off their home sooner? Um, it depends, right? So, like, first of all, this is a general rule. The first thing I would do is say is ask somebody, do you have unsecured credit card debt? You know, or do you have any unsecured debt? Because typically, that's a higher interest rate. And then also, the mortgage interest that you're paying, although it's interest, it's usually tax deductible, whereas mortgage or interest that you're paying on an unsecured debt wouldn't be a tax deduction. So before I would put $100 a month extra to the principal on my mortgage, I would reduce all of my consumer debt, right? So there's that. And then um, as far as your retirement goals or your long-term savings plans, that would be where we would bring in John, right. and we would, you know, make sure that you're fully funding because there's a cap. There's a certain amount where, okay, I'm contributing 15% to my retirement. My employer's matching. I've maxed out my IRAs, etc., uh, and I'm on track for my retirement. So now I have this extra disposable income would be where do I put it, and then then we would look at putting it towards your mortgage. So you can run your goals concurrent. But you know, not I obviously wouldn't tell somebody to pay extra on their principal if they had, you know, twenty five percent credit card with fifteen thousand dollars on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. One of one of the things that um, we have nowadays that we haven't had in the future or in the past as much is low interest loans. Mm -hmm. So um, when you get a low interest loan for a long period of time, it's just kind of it's weird. But um, I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people that you don't want to pay that off. You want to, you know, because you're, you're borrowing money really cheap. Sure. Yeah. Some people have a retirement goal. So, you know, they're like, by the time I retire in 20 years, I want to be mortgage free, right. but I have a 30 year mortgage. How do I pull that off? Okay. Yeah. Do I have to refinance to a 20 year loan? Not necessarily. You could go this route. <clears throat> yes. What about the, uh, the strategy of paying one month ahead or like, half, what, what's that magic recipe? Yes, okay, so I was going to add that in here because that actually is the number one question that I always get, which is- Unpredictable. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, which would be like a bi-weekly payment plan. Um, I think that's what we were referring to, yeah, that, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, or there's, it goes by many names, but um, it's called like a accelerator, equity accelerator, uh, bi-weekly, uh, auto draft, weekly, Anyway, um, okay, I really don't want to bore you guys, but this is how that works. The mortgage company themselves only accepts the payments once a month. The company who you sign up for, they take every two weeks a half of a payment. So there's 26 weeks in the year equals 13 payments. 
So essentially, you as the consumer are paying one extra payment per year, and that's it. They just save up, portion, portion, make a payment, portion, portion, make a payment. They don't pay your balance earlier, mm -hmm. like halfway through the month when they take out the deduction. Yeah. So does that answer your question? Yeah. So yeah. if you could pay on your own an extra payment per year, it would accomplish the exact same result. But some people like it for budget purposes. That's where they draft half of your payment mid-month and then the second half of the payment at the end of the month. And they think magically that somehow pays their loan down faster, but really, in fact, it just equals an extra payment per year. And does that in-between company then keep a little portion of that for their services? Typically, yeah. Right. Uh, normally, there's just an upfront administration fee that okay. you pay. Yeah, yeah. And some lenders allow you to do bi-weekly payments as well, but they still don't apply it to your loan any earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, good answer. It's hard to illustrate that. Yes, Mr. I want to make sure I understand it. So if you say it's just one extra payment, the same that you're paying is $1,200 a month. Yes. So if you pay it twice a month, that's going to be the same as giving an extra $100 towards the principal. Yes. About the same. Yes. So you don't regain. Correct. Right. So if you were going to pay extra to principal and you did $100 a month for 12 months, or one extra payment of $1,200, you will accomplish the exact same thing. It makes no difference because on a fixed rate loan, the payments are already amortized out for the entire term, so it doesn't it doesn't save you money like it would on say a credit card with it with daily periodic interest, where every month they're recharging you more interest based on your outstanding balance. So all the same result. Biweekly is one annual extra payment or one. Any other questions before I move on? Okay, next one. Shorter term. Um, so the reason why I wanted to show this is because, um, oh, I forgot to put the payment app on here. The whole point was I wanted to show you um, how much, how it's not that much different uh, for a 15 year loan versus a 30 year loan because um, many people think that half the term would equal twice the payment um, or thereabouts. So if you had a 30-year loan, again, going on the same numbers, 240000 30 years, about $1,200 a month, um, that that would end up being, you know, a 15-year would be a $2,400 a month payment, right? Twice the payment. Um, that's not the case because the interest rate is lower and because you pay so much less interest. So the payment ends up being, in this case, about $1,700 a month for a 15 year versus $1,200 for uh, 30. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Yeah. Okay. So um, that would be about $500 difference per month yeah. to pay the loan off in half the time. So the advantages of a 15 year loan versus a 30 is a lower base interest rate. So where you may get a 30 year at 4%, you could get probably three and a quarter on a 15 year. So they're saving money on payment number one. Uh, and then the second advantage is on fixed amortized loans, like a 30 year mortgage, the first 10 years of that 30 years is where you pay the majority of the interest. So it's you know like 95% interest and 5% principal is how your payment is broken out. If you look at you know payment number one, it's like, Horrible. By going on the shorter term, you are eliminating that whole 10 year period of horrible interest payments and half of the second 10 year period by going with 15 year loan. So you start out the gate almost 50 50 principal and interest, uh, which is a good place to be. It accelerates your principal reduction. So, in the same scenario, if you went with a 15 year term, you'd pay about $500 more per month, but you would save over $40,000 in interest. Um, and this is the exact same illustration twice, sorry. Uh, but it is a good illustration to see not only do you pay the loan up in half the time, you save $40,000 in interest. Wow. Okay. So uh, a lot of times when I meet with clients, they want to go over 10 different 30-year payment options as far as like, what if I buy points? What if I don't buy points? What if I pay extra principal? And then I go, you do a 15 year and they go, ah, yes, and they do a 15 year, even though they think, no way, 
because they think it's going to be so much higher for payment, but then when you show the savings in the life of the loan, if they can man if you can manage the payment, shorter term is always the way to go because people say they're going to pay extra principal and then they just make minimum payment and so they end up not accomplishing their goal. Mm -hmm. and, but the only word to the wise on that is um, if you go with a shorter term loan and then something happens and changes your scenario financially, you can't back off that payment to you know reduce it back to the lower amount. That's your minimum payment. So if you have a variable income situation, uh, then sometimes you have lean months and sometimes you have strong months, you would be better off going with a longer term loan and making extra payments to principal because you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you have a hardship to make that payment. Question on that maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, when you are paying more on your loan, aren't there like two options you could put more towards interest or more towards something else? Not really. It okay. all goes towards principal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you never want to pay ahead on a mortgage. It doesn't uh, help you out at help all. you in any way. Yeah. Um, it would, but when you make a payment, it will always extra will always go to principal on a mortgage, unless you have an escrow shortage, which is the little separate account <coughs> that insurance. Mm -hmm. It's like your taxes went up, and so now you're you have a depleted escrow account. If there's extra funds being applied, it will always go to that first, and then. Okay. Uh, well, we um, every once in a while, we you know we send in extra money to the principal. My wife always makes out, uh, doesn't make out a check, but she does it online. Yep. So a separate entry. Okay. And I've asked her, well, why do you do that? Why don't you just make add so much to the payment and mm -hmm. just specify? It? She goes, well, because I fear that they won't apply it to the principal, that they'll apply it to the interest. Is that? Um, on some loans, it would be, but on a mortgage, no. Okay. The, the only, there's, this is very granular, but the only difference would be like, um, if you made a whole extra payment to principal, like your payment's 1200 and then you turn around and made another $1,200 payment, they might apply that to the next month's payment, uh, just not knowing. So if you like had a drop down box where you could say, I want this to go to principal, then you would potentially want to make a separate payment and have it go to principal. But you should be able to just write the check for over and it would automatically be applied to principal. It is outlined in your note on what the bank intends to do with extra payments, but it always just says apply it to principal. Okay? And you should get like a mortgage statement monthly. And if you're on auto pay, an online mortgage pay payment statement. Uh, monthly, and so then you could go back and check and make sure that that is how it was applied. Home equity lines and credit are different. So if you're trying to pay on a revolving HELOC, don't follow these guidelines. Do what you think says. Okay? Uh, final worksheet that uh, I am excited to show you guys is also a very common question, which is, is it worthwhile for me to refi? So this scenario, um, let's say uh, Mandon Foley purchased a home <laughs> five years ago. So the scenario is bought the home five years ago. You paid three hundred thousand dollars for the house, and you had a twenty percent down payment. So your original mortgage balance was two hundred forty thousand dollars. Okay, and that was in two thousand ten, five years ago. <laughs> Excuse me. And the interest rate at that time was 4.75, very good interest rate, uh, and it was a 30-year term. So it shows that the total monthly payment was $1,251.95 at that time. Okay, so now it's today, um, April of 2015, and Mandan says, uh, I, I noticed rates are a little lower, um, should I refi? And it, and uh, I won't save a whole percent. I heard that you're supposed to save a whole point. This is something I hear very often. Or two points, if people think you have to save one or two points on your mortgage interest rate, which would mean taking it from 4.75 down to say 3.75. So, you know, tell me, Sierra, is it worthwhile for me to refine? So, based on 
being five years into the loan, his current balance is about 220. As you can see in this blue box, we're looking at the blue box, mm -hmm. uh, 219,595. That's where you're at today after five years. So if you were to refi today, uh, the new loan balance at 225, that's assuming that you roll in all the costs. And it doesn't cost $5,500 to refi, but there's interest and escrow reserve set up, uh, could you skip a couple payments? So just erring on the side of overestimating, say 225. You start it today, and let's say today's rate is 4.125. So, but Manda doesn't want to add any time to his loan. So he said, I want to go with a 25 year loan. So it's like five years in, I want to pay this off, same maturity date. So we keep, we give him a 25 year term. Okay, so that payment is 1203.22. Okay, his previous payment was twelve fifty, mm -hmm. and his new payment is twelve hundred. So the average consumer would say that's not worth it. Heck no, I'm not going to refi. So this is again where doing the math really is very eye opening, because um, if you look at the blue box status quo, do nothing. If he keeps the current loan from today until maturity, so from now until 2040, when he pays his loan off, he'll pay an extra one hundred fifty six thousand dollars in interest. If he takes the refi and makes even a lesser monthly payment than what he's currently making, he'll have the same maturity date, but he will pay only $136,000 in interest. Mm -hmm. So he will save over $20,000 over the next 25 years by making a lesser payment than what he's currently making with the same maturity date. Did not add any time onto his loan and lowered his payments 50 bucks a month, $600 a year. Okay, so does that sort of change your mind a little bit about whether it would be worthwhile? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes it does. No? <laughs> <laughs> now is there a fee generally to do a, a refinance then? Or not Say again? Is there a fee to set up a? Yes, okay. and that is included. So okay. that's why the yeah. new loan balance wow. is 225 oh, sure, sure. and the old loan balance was only 220. That already takes that into account. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're breaking even on that basically right out the gate because you're basically looking at just the interest that you're yeah. paying. Yeah. So, and then the screen box just shows you, if you weren't looking for a monthly payment savings, you were just looking to save money on interest, if he said, okay, great, sign me up for that 20 year at $1,200, but I'll just keep making the same payment I am now at $1,250 on the new one. So just change nothing except for lower the rate, then he would, he would pay the loan off one and a quarter years early. So that's a, saving, a huge savings of payments. And then he would save almost 10,000 more in interest. So that would be almost $30,000 in interest savings by basically just letting a loan officer rewrite the loan at a lower interest rate, keeping the payments the same, pays the loan off earlier, and saves money in the long run on interest. Yes? So in this example, that's only uh, going from uh, 4.75 to 4.125. Correct. That's so not, that's, that's only five like days. Exactly. So that's the whole point of this illustration is to dispel the myth that you have to save a whole percent in interest in order for it to be advantageous to refinance. Mm -hmm. So there are plenty of times when, depending on your loan balance and depending on how far you're in on your current loan term, and what your long-term goals are, how much longer you're gonna stay in the home. Um, those are all factors that we would ask you up front before doing this illustration. There's sometimes when only three eighths or a half a percent in interest makes it worthwhile. And then there's sometimes, let's say you only owe $50,000 on your mortgage and you're 10 years from paying it off. There's basically no refi that we could work out for you that would be advantageous regardless of the interest rate. It would have to be a massive change in interest rate. So that you want to get rid of that misconception that um, you have to save a full percent in interest. What you want to do is you want to share your goal with your loan officer and let us figure out if what you have is a good way to go or if there is a way to save. So probably about 40%, 50% of the folks that I talk to um, to ask this question, the answer is no, you shouldn't refi. Because what whatever their goal is, uh, they already have the best product to reach that goal, or it would take them too long to break even on the expense of refinancing to be 
be worth the investment of, of the upfront cost. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, cool. So, uh, but then there's the 60% where it's like, oh, this is clearly, clearly, clearly worth it. Costs like about $2,500 to refi. So if you're going to save, you know, if you're going to stay in the home even 10 years and it can save you ten or 12000 in interest, then it's worthwhile to do it. Um, okay, any questions on that? Okay, final item. I, I just, this is just a fun thing that I printed out because it's kind of colorful and um, I like the graphics on it. Um, some interesting data about first time home buyers. So, uh, there's so much weird information out there on social media and etc. about you know home buyers and the, their demographics, and so I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, as far as like millennials, um, as far as it says, basically 85% of non homeowners ages 18 to 34 aspire to buy a home. So, there's only 15% of non homeowners that say, eh, it's not for me. But um, the 25% of buyers under 33 or younger would move up their purchase time then if they had access to down payment funds. So that's an interesting one. Um, and then 26% of first time home buyers use a gift for all or part of their down payment. So, um, and then this is a, a very interesting one. The 74% of renters want to buy a home but are afraid they won't qualify so they don't try. Hmm. So, um, <laughs> Loan officer is my official title, but loan counselor is more like it. Um, I do spend a lot of time working with folks who don't qualify for a home loan now, but there's always a way to create a path. So um, even if you've had bankruptcy, you have cautions, you've uh, been out of work, we can assess and evaluate the situation and put you on the track. And it might be three months out, it might be a year out, uh, it might be five years out if you recently had, you know, in the foreclosure. But at least you know, and so you're not living in the unknown, basically. Uh, and things have really changed. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, in the 80s, 30, 35 years ago, you really had to have 20% down to buy a house. And the house prices were like fifty to $100,000, and the interest rates were like 9 to 11%. So you, you know, really have to save to get that $10,000 down. So you get married young and live with your parents or have a little apartment and save, 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 save for your 20% down. Nowadays, you can definitely buy a house with zero down. There's all kinds of really cool programs available that almost anyone qualifies for, for down payment assistance. Uh, and then the minimum without down payment assistance is just 3%. And all of that can be gifted from you know family member or somebody like that. So. Um, if the only res reservation for home ownership is not having a down payment, then you shouldn't let that hold <coughs> So anyway, kind of interesting stuff. Any questions about anything related to mortgage or interest rates? Yes? Why did you say it wouldn't work, or if I understood what you said, to have a home equity line mm -hmm. of credit or an interest bearing rate? Why is that not good to make the extra payment? It's definitely, definitely good. Um, I think Susan's question is, like, because I had said, um, if you're going to make extra payments to principal, just anything you apply above and beyond your payment will go to principal, mm -hmm. right? And I said, but on a credit card or a home equity line of credit, that might not be the case. Um, that's because uh, of the way interest is charged on home equity lines of credit. Typically, a home equity line of credit is a revolving account, uh, which has a variable interest rate, mm -hmm. and the interest payment itself is calculated monthly based on the current rate and the outstanding balance. And so, it's it's there's you know 30 let's say 30 calendar days. While they're in the process of calculating that interest through that time, if you make a payment to principal, they might actually think that you're paying. They might they might actually apply it to interest due, depending on when you apply that payment during the month. So, um, my advice on that is, if you want to pay extra on home equity line of credit, is to make the minimum payment and then immediately pay a payment to principal. Because that's pretty much the way to guarantee that the whole amount of your payment is going to go to extra principal and not go towards next month's interest. Okay. 
So make it basically at the same time as you do your your regular yes. payment. Yes, either pay it, in, like pay one big payment, or make your minimum payment and then pay extra, but don't make a principal payment halfway through your billing statement before your next payment is due. Okay. I see them supply all the time. Any other, yes? I just have a comment about uh, <coughs> the things on here. You, you said 15% are unmarried couples. Uh-huh. We're starting to run into this in the industry quite a bit where you go into closing and you find out the people that own the house bought it before they got married and now they're married so their names are legally changed and on the deed of trust they still have it in their maiden name and yeah. if you don't catch it before closing, closing doesn't work. You have to go back and you have to rechange all the documents and uh, make it right before it actually works. Oh, wow. So it's something that we're having to pay more attention to an interesting fact. Mm. Yeah, that is, that, you're right, that comes up. Um, another time I'll do a presentation, I'll talk to you about title ownership, because there's a lot of different ways to hold title, and the implications of title vesting. Um, if you're married, it's just married, but if you're not married, there's you know seven which ways to hold title, and they'll have different liability implications. So make sure you get a lot of sleep the night before. <laughs> Yes, Kevin. What can people do to uh, keep their um, credit rating high so that when they go to refinance or, or to buy a house that, that's not an issue? Because it seems like a lot of people like maybe don't monitor or check it, and then they're like, whoa, you know, I didn't know about this. Right. Yes, story of my life. Whoops, <laughs> 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 I didn't know. That happens all the time. I mean, basically the golden rule is pay your bill on time. And Stay well below your available credit limits. Um, those are the two major golden rules. Don't let anything go to collections. If you get a parking ticket, pay it. If you are self-employed, pay your taxes in a timely manner. Um, and if you're thinking about making a major purchase, check your credit in advance so that you're not uh, at the loan table and then we're first checking your credit when you're already under contract to purchase the home. Because if there's something we can fix quickly and get that out of the way, and save you a lot of money in interest based on your credit score. So um, there's a lot. Credit is such a deep, deep, deep subject. I spend all day on it every day. Uh, that uh, I'll put together a separate presentation next time on credit so that we can really talk about the A to Z. What do you tell people if they want to go out and buy a whole lot of furniture and need new cars before closing? <laughs> you probably can't. Sure yeah. Don't. Don't. <laughs> no. Don't. No. Which is better? Let's say you want to draw a hundred thousand dollars out of your house. Uh -huh. Put a hundred thousand as a second mortgage, or take a line of credit for a hundred thousand. Totally depends. Depends on what the rate is on your mortgage now. Depends on how long you're going to live in the home and what you're going to use the money for. So, call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. That's my time. Unless there's any other questions. Thank you for putting up with that uh, long explanation.